Tom has been super efficient and in this truck right there is uh, the engine. I'm gonna pick it up and put it on the boat straight away. Yesterday I sailed out of the harbour and in the harbour it was pretty easy you know when there is 10-12 knots of wind not too much of a problem you know the Maxi is quite expensive uh, it's also a race boat so it's really light and really powerful so it's not really like you know your regular keel boat that has momentum this boat is a stops if uh, you don't have sails or if there is no wind and as soon as the wind picks up, the boat just shoots across the harbor at eight knots. So it's not really ideal for, uh, you know, close quarter maneuvering. And the days you go uh, training and there is 25 knots, uh, just getting out of the harbor or in can be pretty tricky. So it's good to have, it's good to have a reliable engine to uh, do your maneuver and not have to uh, stress but where you're gonna go and how you're gonna get into the arbor. I've been struggling with my outboard engine uh, for quite a bit. And uh, just as a coincidence, um, the guys from ePropulsion have been contacting me to review one of uh, the new engine, which is an electric outboard. I'm gonna open the box and see what's inside. <laughs> There we go. The shirt. Excel. E propulsion. Excel. Do you look like Excel? All right, fair enough. Right. So we've got. I guess that's for charging. That's charger. That's another charger. I guess I should read the manual oh, that's probably the short charger and that's probably the right i'll read the i read the instructions and that's the engine all right Ta -da! that's the engine what's pretty cool though it's that look i lift it with one arm pretty light compared to what i had before all right, I'm not an expert, but look, looks like there is no battery in there. All right, I read Tom's email more properly. Uh, <laughs> the battery is <laughs> arriving on a different package. But yeah, at least I get the engine. <laughs> All right, let's put this back.
yesterday I went for some shopping and when I went out of the supermarket uh, there was just a huge pod of uh, coolant liquid uh, on the floor so good old Van is doing funny stuff again <laughs> that I'm not good with engine and actually I think engines don't like me and so the water pump on this engine failed so I need to change the whole distribution and everything so until this is done I found temporary solution which is getting this pipe here that I'll fill with water I have a hose here going in there and going into the expansion jar whatever it's called um, because there is two ways to find a leak, or you fix the hole, or you keep pouring liquid into whatever content you want to fill. So that's going to be my temporary plan, because anyway I need to go buy parts and things like this. Let's see if it works. And in the meantime, there is a more exciting news about the engine. I just received a new toy, so let's go. Here is where I left the unboxing last time. I have, uh, I had already the engine. I was just missing the battery, which arrived today. Normally, when I open something like this, I tend not to look at the manual too much um, because it's just what I do. Um, so I did the same there. I just read the quick start guide, and they say that when the battery is cheap, it's in deep sleep mode, and you should charge it for at least four seconds to uh, activate it, and so it's ready to run. So I did that already. So let's see, I have here the unit, I have here the tiller that I need to mount. So this goes here. Here we go. That's connected, easy. Well, this looks like it's gonna go there. Yes, no. There we go. Oh, it clicks. Oh, super easy. It looks like this is locked, and to unlock it, you need to open this. And just like this, it stays in place. It's a little bit wiggly. And the end, the old thing ends up being as heavy as a normal outboard so the magnet kill switch and it goes here press power and hold for two seconds one two there we go hello okay and turn the throttle oh there we go so turn the throttle and it turns all right so it works Okay, so now it's on and they say to pour it off. You just need to pull this You cannot use it anymore and these things beep because it has no this so you need to press on this To turn it off. I'm going to load this on the boat. So probably to put it in place I'll remove the battery. So it's just this and This Okay, so the battery is disconnected. Let me go and mount this Okay, so it seems connected. 
Well, I don't normally do much of these uh, review. Also, uh, you know that I'm pretty unlucky with engines, uh, especially recently. E Proportional reached out to me to see if I could uh, try one of the new engines. I said yes, so they sent me uh, the engine uh, for free, but I'm in no way paid to uh, to do this. So I'll just review uh, the product and give you my uh, honest opinion, which is uh, the only thing I can do really. Pour l'allumer, faut mettre ça stock dessus, deux secondes là-dessus, bip. Ça marche, donc assez simple. Bah voilà, on va le laisser allumer. Euh... Il y a marche arrière aussi ou pas Ouais, dans l'autre sens. Alors j'ai de la chance, j'ai Vincent qui vient avec moi. C'est un peu l'espère technique du pôle, donc euh, il va pouvoir tester avec moi. Ok, c'est bon Alors c'est parti. Hop Alors moi, ce qui me fait toujours halluciner, c'est que c'est silencieux. C'est vrai C'est silencieux. Tu sais, t'as bah, pas un bruit quoi. Normalement, quand tu sors du, du moteur au port, du port au moteur, <laughs> On the paper, uh, I really like uh, the idea of an electric engine. It's less trouble than uh, a normal engine. It always uh, work uh, pretty much. You don't have you know problem to start it. And this one on the paper has really good specs. Uh, the two key features I see, uh, one is that it's a really big battery, uh, so it gives an hour and 50 minutes of uh, autonomy at full throttle, and about 10 hours at uh, low economic throttle. Uh, so let's see how this goes uh, for real on the water. But that's pretty amazing for an electric engine. And also this one, and I think it's the only one um, on the market to uh, feature e-propulsion. So it's an outboard uh, that you can use on your dinghy or on your small cruiser. And when you put it in the sail, it charges the battery, so it self-charges. And that's pretty amazing uh, for me, which means that you can, you know, just not think about fuel or about battery. You can just charge it as soon as you're in the sail. And I think that's a really, really cool feature. Voilà, là, on est au taquet max. Là, on est à 1000 watts. Bon, environ 4 nœuds et on est à 1000 watts. 200 watts et je crois que si j'appuie là, voilà, là, voilà. À ce rythme là, on peut quand même continuer pendant 6 heures. 6 heures de nœuds, 12 000. Pas mal. C'est pas mal quand même. Sachant que dès qu'il y a du vent, tu remets ton truc et tu recharges. Quoi. Bon, finalement, on a refait un test, du coup, euh, en se mettant bien face au vent. Euh, et du coup, ce qu'on voit, c'est que quand on met la poignée euh, dans l'angle, donc à fond, 1000 watts, on n'accélère pas tant que ça par rapport à quand on est à mi-parcours, quoi. Et à mi-parcours, déjà, on double l'autonomie, voire un peu plus. Donc, euh, voilà, pour l'instant, c'est parfait pour rentrer, sortir du port, euh, faire un peu de distance s'il y a vraiment pétole sur un convoyage. Quoi. Et maintenant, on va tester le truc le plus intéressant quand même, qui est euh, l'hydrogénération. Du coup, là, on a mis la voile, on a mis la poignée en position zéro. Et on voit lui que direct il se met à charger, donc il y a un petit euh, petite prise là qui clignote et là donc voilà on voit ce qu'on charge en instantané. Donc euh, 25, euh, 40 volts, euh, watts. Euh, euh, watt, sachant qu'on est à 4 nœuds à peu près. Donc là on est en mode recharge. On est entre, on est entre 4 et 6 nœuds et le on charge entre 40 et 100, euh, et 100 watts, ça dépend un peu des accélérations. Euh, donc, euh, comme Vincent le disait euh, très justement, euh, c'est des meilleurs en maths que moi. Mais en gros, euh, si tu restes à, poignée, mo à moitié de poignée pendant euh, euh, une heure à 500 watts, euh, tu dis donc 500 watts, et si tu recharges 50 watts, bah, il te faudra 10 fois plus de temps pour euh, re recharger ce que euh, tu as perdu. 
Donc, euh, donc voilà, en gros pour euh, une minute, euh, non, pour dix minutes, non. Donc <rire> pour une minute d'utilisation, c'est dix minutes de recharge. Donc, euh, donc en fait c'est pas mal parce que euh, même si tu as eu un peu trop utilisé ton moteur, tu sais que euh, il suffit qu'avant d'arriver au port, euh, tu sois à la voile et que tu charges pendant euh, une dizaine de minutes et tu sais que tu as une minute de, de, de moteur euh, derrière. Donc, euh, c'est honnête Enfin, c est, c est, ça reste un bon compromis. Ouais, tu mets tout à l'heure, euh, ça fait tout pendant rentrer quoi. Bien. Ouais, voilà. Donc voilà, l'autre test c'était de euh, le mettre en position haute. Donc c'est assez simple, on fout la batterie euh, à part, et on relève le moteur et là on est sûr qu'il n'y a pas de traînée. Quoi. Ah bah ça c'est étonnant, une trace d'essence. <rire> c'est pas nous. Hein. <rire> ça c'est tranquille. Ça pour manœuvrer c'est beau quand même. Trop facile même. Euh, en revanche les barbates ils sont de l'autre côté. Hein. <rire> T'as fait ça juste parce que tu voulais faire un tour, je suis sûr. I started the trial today with 93% battery, something like this, been draining it a bit, charging it. Um, just before tomorrow, uh, I'm going out training, uh, before I start doing more testing, I'll fully charge the battery. So you have a charger that you plug into shore power. You have this plug here, a green button, and this here will light. There we go, turns red and I think it turns blue once it's fully charged. So I'll leave it to charge and more sailing tomorrow. Well, today I'm off to uh, Lorient. I'm supposed to train tomorrow and the day after in Lorient and then heading to La Rochelle to train with the training center over there for five days. Well, because it's a uh, outdoor sport, of course, it's when lots of big lows are passing. So today it's gonna be probably a Beat beam reach to uh, to Lorient in 25 to 30 knots, probably a bit more in the gust. Let's see what happens after. For tomorrow, there's 45 knots forecasted. But anyway, it's a good uh, opportunity to test uh, the engine to be on the go like this. That's why I need an engine for getting into arbors I don't know, into tight space. And yeah, just uh, sail the boat in, uh, in heavy wind. training here in Lorient, I am heading towards uh, La Rochelle because there is another training starting there uh, and I've been accepted to join, that's pretty cool. Um, it's starting tomorrow, normally Saturday, but towards the end of today, it's big low coming, more than 40, 50 knots forecasted. So I'm not planning to go sailing into this, would be a bit stupid. 
So I'm heading towards uh, La Rochelle. Let's see how far uh, I make it. Maybe I'll uh, stop in Lille first. Uh, there is about 25 knots at the moment. It's forecasted to go up to um, 35 later. So I'll see what I do, how fast I go. Um, the wind strength is not too much of a problem. The waves might be a problem because there's six meters for casting and this offshore is fine, but once it gets uh, into the bay of Biscay, it can get pretty nasty. So let's see how it goes. Anyway, it's sunny, so I'm not complaining. Uh, there's lots of little squalls around, but we'll deal with that in due time. Uh, other than this, yeah, pretty good. It's winter sailing. Interesting thing it is now, so after when you get to summer, it's really nice and easy. Alright, so it's uh now between 25 and 30 knots of wind we're moving at around 9 knots at uh, 70 degrees from the true wind angle which gives you around 55 um, apparent to wind uh, angle and uh, yeah, it's a bit bumpy but not too bad uh, considering the day yeah, keep on rolling So there is in between 25 and 30 knots of wind. The sea state is quite bumpy. There is around 4 meters well, but quite disorganized. There isn't, there isn't much um, depth here. Um, earlier I was under Jenneker when it was around 25, but now with wind picking up over 30, uh, I put the Jenneker down and just with two reefs in the mainsail, one reef in the Genoa and just sending it over 10 knots all the time uh, with the Jenneker I was able to maintain a better average speed but also I'm kind of 110 degrees uh, from the true wind angle that's a bit too narrow for having the Jenneker in such a uh, breeze so just yeah with this sail plan I don't have huge top speed but I managed to maintain an, an average uh, speed above 10 knots so that's, uh, that's fine for me and also saving a bit the material so the sea state, as you can see, is a bit bumpy. Ah. So yeah, pretty fun ride. So this is how I like to test products. This engine has been getting beat up for like the last three days behind the boat, in lots of water and everything. So if it starts when I reach harbour, to have passed the durability test.
exactly the situation where you're happy to have an engine. There is still about 20-25 knots of wind. I don't know the harbor. There seems to be quite a long entry channel. Glad to have an engine that works. I just plugged it and everything's fine. It's working properly. It's pretty cool. All right, here I am in uh, year still. It's still blowing quite hard outside. Uh, I'll be leaving tomorrow morning. I need to wrap up this video about the engine, uh, this engine right there. And basically, um, I've been testing it for two weeks now. So of course, it's not you know a feedback over a really uh, ex extended period of time, but. You know it's a way to have an idea on a product and well i'll start with the bad points um which are not that many actually uh, just the battery mount feels a, a bit wobbly so the, the battery kind of moves but doesn't dislodge by itself so it's just a, a strange feeling otherwise that the whole thing looks feels really good but just the battery mount feels a bit strange um, and also the kill switch is uh, jumping really easily uh, meaning that I don't know on a, on a you know on a dinghy you don't make so, so much movement but on a boat where the, the, the engine is behind the boat uh, it's moving a bit more so it's a magnetic thing and it's jumping a bit but these are minimal stuff um, and last I think it's for a cruising boat the pitch is a bit too uh, low. With a bit more pitch, uh, I think we could get uh, higher speeds um, with the boat because the engine has lots of torque. So that's just one thing, but I've been talking with uh, e-propulsion and uh, I think they're looking into that uh, option. So this might be something that comes at a later stage. Um, and on the, on the positive side about this engine, it looks really reliable and I mean in general I find that you know uh, two strokes or four strokes small uh, outboard engine always fail when you need them this one I feel that you just put the battery plug it and it starts and it works and that's for me super important um, you know to get me inside of outside the elbow I drop the sails I need the engine to uh, kick in and that's what I really like about the electric option is that it should always work um, also the the whole thing as I was saying earlier looks pretty solid uh, I've been sailing the past yeah a few days in like lots of wind the engine was just at the back splashed and getting lots of uh, waves and and banged around and seems okay so far so that's a that's a really good point and uh, it's also really convenient uh, you know separating the battery and the outboard engine you can carry it around pretty easily so that's something I like and also like for example when I'm going to races I need to uh, put the engine uh, in my van and when I was using a fuel engine then the whole van would smell like uh, fuel other than this one you just can just like tug it under uh, under the bed and that's it no smell pretty cool and finally what i really like about this engine is the hydro generation uh, feature um, i would need to test it in more you know more time more extended um, uh, test but just the concept i find it amazing so it's been two weeks i have been using the the engine I haven't charged it once, you know, on the on the plug, and you know, and it's still around, I think, 75%. Meaning that every time I use it a little, I let it roll for an hour, and then that's it, charged. So if you have, you know, a small cruiser or a dinghy or something, and you just you never really need to bring this battery to charge, charge itself. And this, I find it so um, 
I mean, it's so clever to use, you know, the power you have around you, the power of sailing to recharge your battery for your engine when you need it. So that's definitely a really cool point. So that's it. I'll uh, still use the engine and I'll keep, you know, kind of reviewing it about durability and everything. But that's kind of my uh, experience for the last two weeks of using this. Pretty cool feature. And now I'm going to... Uh, drop the trash and everything because tomorrow morning I'm leaving early. Stay safe and fair winds.